All right, welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, my plan is to show you guys how we can actually deploy our application to DigitalOcean servers. So I currently have only two servers because one of my other servers kind of, uh, like it's still up, but I wasn't able to install the dependencies because I was actually trying to test this out on my own and I was getting some issues. So we'll have to figure that out ourselves. But you can actually see that I actually have Node.js set up on the server and I'll show you guys how that's done. So don't worry, but you can see I have an API running and you can see that the application is currently running right now. So right now we're in S1. Okay. And we're using something called sticky sessions. So I'll show you how that works as well. Just so you guys are aware, because I did do a couple of things off camera, but let me go over to the load balancer. So right now we have sticky sessions enabled. And basically what this does is the load balancer will use a cookie. And it'll basically allow that cookie to follow up the request to the same exact droplet, the same server that we requested. So for example, let's say if we initially visit uh, S1, and you can see that right now we are currently on S1. If I go into application, you can see that I have this DOLB cookie. And if I delete this cookie, you can see that right now it gives me a different server. This is, I think this is actually the S3 server. If I delete that, it'll bring me to S1 again. If I delete that, it'll bring me back to React app. It should be bringing me to the S2 server. Not sure why. Okay, there we go. There, there's the S2 now. You can see the titles over there. Okay, but let's say, for example, if I keep refreshing, no matter how many times I refresh, because I have this cookie, it's going to keep me routed to the same server. And you can see that right over here. This is server S2. Now, if I delete that cookie, okay, or if the cookie expires, you can see that we can now route to another server, okay? And it just happened to be S1 and it will keep on routing us to S1 until this cookie expires. So that's what this sticky session does. If we turn it off, let's save it. If we turn it off. And if I refresh, I can now go to literally S1, S2, S3. This is S3 over here. This is S1. This is S2. And this is S3. I actually already have the S3. I actually already have the application on S3. Uh, only the front end though, but don't worry. I'll, like I said, I'll show you guys the whole process of, of how it works. So don't worry. Okay. We're going to, we're basically going to start from scratch as if basically what you're seeing right now, uh, doesn't even exist when we go through the tutorial. I'm just showing you guys what it looks like. Okay. And if we have time, uh, we'll set up S1 in a different way because right now I cannot install dependencies on S1 because I think I accidentally installed my SQL on there. Uh, and then I realized that we needed to do something different. So I'll explain a little bit. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. What you guys would need to do if you guys were to scale your application. One, you need to make sure your dependencies, like your Node.js environment, your Java environment, whatever environment you're working with, you need to make sure that that is all uh, set up on your server. So I'll show you guys how I'm going to set this up. And uh, for the project, we're going to use the Discord. Uh, we're going to use that uh, premiums command project that I had set up in a tutorial. You can go ahead and just clone the repositories on GitHub and follow along. Okay, I already have the repositories cloned, but I'm just going to delete them and start again. So don't worry. But yeah, the code is literally available. Okay, you can go over here and you can download the code. Uh, and you want to make sure you clone it um, to your to your server. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do right now. There's the React repository and there's also the Nest.js repository. So you want to make sure you get both because the React one is the front end and the Nest.js one is the back end. And like I said, I'll leave links in the description so you guys can just easily clone it. And there's documentation to pretty much help guide you through everything. Okay. Okay. So first let's set up our environment first. Okay. So we need to install, uh, we need to install Node.js. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how we can do that. So I'm on Ubuntu 21, like Ubuntu version 21 right now. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install Node.js version 16. Now, I already have Node.js installed already. Okay, so this is not going to do anything, but I'll show you how this is going to work. So all you do is you just go on this website. You can just Google node source distributions. I'll leave a link in the description as well. There's also going to be a repository. Uh, that has everything detailed so you guys can follow along with it. Okay, so don't worry. I'll, I'll write up a, a nice readme for you guys. Okay, and if you guys want to like contribute to that, you guys can as well. 
But you can go to this repository, you can install whatever version of Node.js you want. So 16, 17, 14, 12, you can install whatever version. I'm going to install version 16 because that was that's the version that I use on my local environment. Uh, so we'll, we'll just hit enter. So this is not really going to do much because I already have version 16 installed already. Okay. Um, you can see that it's really not going to do much. And there we go. So we have NPM and we have Node version 16.12.0. Okay, cool. So one more thing to mention is that, uh, wait, hold on, let me just make sure. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay. Yeah, everything, yeah, this should, this should be fine. Okay. All right. So once you paste in that command, you should have node. Okay. The next thing that we're going to install, and this is completely optional, but I would recommend it is yarn. So because I already, I built the project with yarn, I think you should see, you should still be able to use NPM. It should be fine. You don't need to use yarn, but I personally prefer using yarn. Okay. So we're going to use yarn and then we're also going to go ahead and install PM2. I did not install that yet. So we're going to install that. And uh, we're going to install it globally. So basically you see this little uh, table over here. This is from PM2. And it basically is what we're going to use to power our APIs. It's going to basically uh, keep our APIs up. PM2 stands for process manager too. And that's really what it is. It's a process manager. So it'll pretty much run our APIs in the background. So we don't have to like leave the shell open all the time. Okay, so we have PM2. Okay, pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. So we installed Node, we installed Yarn, that's optional, and we installed PM2. PM2 is uh, is optional, but you should definitely use some kind of process manager. So if you don't know of any other process manager, I would highly recommend PM2, it's very nice. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna clone both repositories. So like I said, you're gonna go to this website and you're gonna clone it with HTTP or SSH. I'll do HTTPS, so you clone okay so we cloned the react app now there are a couple things that you will need to change so let's get those changes done first because right now we're not on the development uh environment we're in the production environment or like a staging environment so we're not uh so so basically we need to fix up a couple things and these were a couple things that i did not uh that i had not initially done when i had edited the uh the scripts or when I was like making the tutorial. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to first edit. Let's go into the source folder. So right now, so one thing to mention is that the repository has a subfolder that has the actual react app. So you have to see me twice. Okay. So I'm in discord premium commands. I'm in premium commands, react and in the source folder. So we're going to go into the utils folder. So see the utils Let's zoom in a little bit more. We're going to add this api.ts file. And I have it, I had it hard coded to localhost port 3001. We're gonna we're gonna change it to a different port. Uh, so not not port. Sorry, we're gonna change it to the actual production environment. And the only URL we're gonna focus on is this get auth status. So we're gonna remove this localhost. Okay, and we're gonna replace that with our domain ansonfong.io slash api slash auth slash status. So this. API call is going to get us the status of the API, or it's going to get us the status of if we're authenticated or not. Okay, so we need that. So we'll go ahead and uh, exit. And before I install the dependencies and run the build script, I'm going to edit one more thing. We're going to go into the pages folder. We're going to go into landing folder and we're going to edit the landing page.tsx file. And we're going to change this window.location.href. It's going to instead go to our API. So it's going to go to ansonfong.io slash API slash auth login. And that's what's going to trigger the actual passport to run. And then that's when we're going to see the redirection. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay. And uh, one more thing that I'll do that's optional. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do this just for uh my own purpose is i'm going to go into the public folder and i'm just going to change the title just so that i can recognize it easier okay uh server s3 i'll call it server s3 okay so we're done with making all of the changes that should be everything uh now this do this does not include stripe if you want stripe you what you need to do is you need to actually create an environment variable in order for stripe to work 
Uh, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to skip that part because the whole point of this tutorial is for getting the actual uh, like load balancer and getting the actual apps running. So we're not. So we're going to ignore this type of stuff. But don't worry, it's still going to work though. The authentication will still work. Like we're definitely going to make sure the Discord OAuth too is going to work. So don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, but but uh, let's go ahead and run yarn. And then we're going to run yarn build after. Okay. So yarn is going to install all the dependencies and then yarn build will build the actual uh, project into the uh, the distributed file so we can actually serve it, serve the static file. So this will take some time. So in the meantime, uh, you're probably wondering, well, what are we going to do with the database? Don't we have to install MySQL? So here's the problem that I realized when I was uh, actually recording. Um, so what I realized was that if we have three databases or if we have like, you know, one database for each uh, for each application, you're going to have a problem where if the user logs into server one and performs some kind of CRUD application or CRUD, CRUD operation, and if they log into server two, the data is going to be inconsistent because they're isolated databases. Okay, so there's no point in installing a database on each server. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a managed database. Okay, now you can either use a managed database or you can create um a fourth or you can create one single droplet like i say i say i say fourth because we already have three droplets already but you can create another droplet and let that droplet uh like run my sequel but honestly there's really no point because um I, I just really don't see much of a point of it especially if it's a production environment usually the way to go is using managed databases because if you self-host a database you're going to have to manage it yourself. You're going to have to manage the tables. You're going to have to manage the users. You're going to have to manage the rules. And it's just a lot easier to do everything with a managed database. Okay. Uh, so I'd recommend uh, going about it that way. Okay. Uh, so I already have one already, as you can see over here. But I'll create another one just for the sake of tutorial. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a database. And the cheapest one you can get is a... MySQL, well, they're all the same price for the cheapest one. It's all 15 bucks a month. And you get one gigs of RAM, or one gig of RAM, one virtual CPU, and 10 gigabytes of disk. Okay, and you can obviously configure this however you need to fit your application's needs. So we'll go with the basic one. Uh, and we'll make sure that uh, it's in the same uh, data center region, because if it's not, then it will not work. So make sure when you create it, you look carefully and you see that it says SFO3, so that's San Francisco 3, not 2, 3. Okay, uh, so I'll just call this uh, MySQL DB2. I'll call it MySQL DB2, okay? Um, and that should go ahead and be it, so we should be fine. And I also like how uh, DigitalOcean has other options too. There's Postgres SQL, there's Redis, there's also MongoDB, which makes it very easy to integrate into your application. Okay, so, all right, there we go. So the database is going to take a couple of uh, seconds or a couple of minutes to create. So while that's while that's creating, let's go back here and we'll go back to the database. So we just installed all the dependencies. So let's go ahead and build the application now. Okay. So the build shouldn't take too long. And once we're done building, what we're going to do is we're going to move the build files into the uh, var slash www directory. And then we're going to have to configure our Nginx server block to make sure it points to that. Okay. And we're not going to be done yet because we still have to deal with the Nest.js stuff. So don't worry. I'm just trying to get the React stuff done first. So this should be done. And uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. So we have our build folder. So let's move this into var www. And let's see the into folder. And you can see I already have a folder already because I was playing around with this before, but I'll delete that. And we're going to go ahead and take that build folder. And we're going to change the name to anything we want. But this folder, this slash var slash www folder might contain other website files. So you want to name it based off the domain just to make it easier. Okay, so we have s 3 ensignfongcom and if you see into there, it's literally just the build files. Okay, and if you look at the title of the index.html, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can spot it, but it should say it's somewhere. 
uh, there should be a title tag that tells us server SD right over here on the right side, right over here. So that'll be our distinction. And I'm only doing that, like I said, just to make it easier for me to see it. So I know which, uh, which uh, uh, server I'm on. Okay, now we got to go ahead and modify the S3 dot ansonfong the io file inside the sites available folder and what we got to do is we need to go and configure the root over here so right now well actually i've already done already but basically what we're doing here is uh we're basically changing it so you probably already had it at html folder instead of s3 so just change it to s3 um and this should be fine so slash var slash ww slash s3 dot And basically what happens is we're basically telling Nginx to look at this folder, find the index.html file and serve it. Okay, so you need to make sure that it's exactly like this. You cannot have a slash, you cannot have slash index.html. It has to be the folder that has an index.html, and that will be the one that gets served. And one more thing that you'll have to do is by default over here, you'll have an equal sign 404. You want to change that to a slash index.html because uh, because since we're using Nginx as a web server, uh, whenever we make a request to a route on the client side of the application, Nginx is going to think that that's a route on the server side, so it's going to give you a 404 not found. So in order for the routes to actually properly work on the single page application, you need to make it so that uh, it'll try all these files over here first. And if it can't find any, it'll just redirect back to the index.html, which is really just your single page application. Okay, that's really what a single page application is. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's just go ahead and run nginx t to make sure everything works fine. And we'll restart nginx. Okay, so S3 should be working fine. We should see the title S3. So it's gonna take some time to actually uh should it should pop up anytime soon. Okay, so it seems like we're getting an internal server error, so we may we may have messed up somewhere. Let me double check. Uh, let's see. So, let me just double check real quick. So we have the server names. That's all good. The location. That's good. Uh, the root seems to be good. Okay. Everything seems to be okay. So, I'm not sure why. Let me see. Maybe I should just disable the firewall too, just so I can test it easier. Because it is giving giving us an internal server error. But uh, I'm not sure why that would be the case though. Because we did build everything and there was no errors when we built it. So I'm trying to just understand why. Mm, let's see. Let me double check something real quick. Maybe I may have missed something. So I'll show you the config for S2. And you can see that it's going to be really identical. So there's var wws2. And then, did I rename Did I name it incorrectly? I don't think I did. Uh, everything over there looks fine. Okay. Uh, don't worry about the slash API. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I think I know what might be the issue. But it shouldn't be a problem though because... Uh, let's see. It shouldn't be a problem though. I don't think it's because we don't have the API though. Let me double check. Okay, so var www.s3.ansonfong.io looks good. If I go into var www, okay, s3. Okay, so that's good. Everything here looks good. So I'm not sure. Oh, wait. I messed up. It's supposed to be .io, not .com. Whoops. My bad. It took me long enough to realize. Uh, MV, S3. S3, .io. Let's go ahead and edit the Nginx file again. Let's just double check that. All right, there we go. All right, so I, I messed up on the folder over there. Okay, that's fine. Now this should work. S2, S1, S2. Okay, there we go. S3 is over there. 
But you can see that for some reason the button does not show up on S3. I don't know why. Uh, and it doesn't show up on S2 either, which is really weird. All right, so the reason why right now it's not actually giving us stuff back for S2 or S3. Uh, so what's happening is whenever we try to like, whenever we try to make a request to the server, because we're not using sticky sessions, it's literally going to. Uh, I think it's. I think what happens is it actually forwards the request to a different server, because we still need to fetch the JavaScript and stuff. Um, I mean, it seems like the JavaScript is able to be found, but I think maybe, yeah, I think this JavaScript just can't be found. Now, pay close attention. If I refresh it, you'll see that sometimes it's fetched and sometimes it isn't. Okay, so we need to use sticky sessions to fix that because right now it's going all over the place. So we'll fix that right now. Don't worry. Okay, so let's go back and let's go ahead and go into the load balancer and let's just enable sticky sessions. It's really easy. Click on cookie, give the cookie a name. We'll call this, uh, uh, not the O for DigitalOcean. We'll call this uh, Ansing IO. Okay. And you can set the time to live for this cookie. So 300 seconds would basically be uh, five minutes. So let's set it to, let's set it to uh, 10 seconds. Okay. And if we look at the application, and if I refresh the page, you should see that I have the Ansing IO. Okay, and in about like a couple more seconds, that cookie should expire and it should take us to S1 or take us to a different server. But right now, let me just keep refreshing. Right now you see how it only takes me to S1 and now it's taking to S2. And for next for the next 10 seconds, I will only go to S2, no matter what. Okay. And in a couple more seconds, it should navigate me to another server. So right now it's navigating me to S3. I'm not sure why S3 is not showing me the button. I may have messed something up with the... Uh, there's a chance that I may have messed something up with the, uh, the the config stuff, maybe. It should show the button, though. Maybe I may have messed up the React app. Let me double check real quick. But if I did, though, it should have definitely 100% pulled me. So let me just... Make sure. Okay, so the button is fine. We changed the URL. The URL is fine. So I'm not sure why S3 would not show the button at all. But anyways, it doesn't really matter for now. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. But I, again, I'm not sure why S3 doesn't want to show the button. It's really weird. Okay, I think we have an error somewhere. Yeah, it seems like we have an error in our... Okay, I think I may have messed up when I was editing the, the, the index file. I think when I was editing the uh, the index file, I may have messed up. So I think there's an error somewhere near the title. I'm looking at the title tag. So the title tag seems okay, but I, I may have accidentally deleted something. So what we'll do is we'll just rebuild everything. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go back to the previous directory. And let me just do this. Uh, let me just do this. I'll just edit the TSX file. Actually, no, not that. Uh, I'll just edit one of the pages. And what I'll do is I'll just add. Whoops. And I'll just add an H1. Go H1 server S3. Just so that we know what server it is. All right, so that should be fine. Don't want to overcomplicate this too much. I don't want to go over time. But let's just let that build. Because we still have to set the back end. Remember, it's gonna take some time. Okay, we still gotta set up the back end stuff. And you'll see, you see right over here, if you have been looking at the Nginx file, and if you look over here, you'll see that I have a location slash API, and that's what we're gonna do for the S3 server. Because essentially what's gonna happen is if we don't have this slash API, we're basically telling Nginx that this route doesn't exist. So on the front end, if we try to access slash API or any route after slash API, it's gonna think that's a front end. It's, go it's gonna think that that's, in, that's a route on the front end. Well, actually what's gonna happen is the server is not gonna recognize that route and it's just going to fall back to the index.html page. So nothing's gonna happen. So we have to set that up. And now, and like I said, I'll explain everything. Uh, I'll explain more about that when we actually get to that part. But right now we gotta focus on this. So let me go ahead and move this into the folder over there. We'll go into the folder. And like I said, to simplify this process, it's better to just create like a development pipeline. 
Okay, so that should work. If I refresh on S3, so let me actually go and clear my cookies. Or just delete this one. I'll just delete everything. So let's just try to get to S2 or S3. So that's S2. Oh, there we go, S3 works. Perfect. So we're on S3. Okay, uh, great. And I'll also increase the cookie too. Let's do... Let's do... I guess 120 seconds, so that's two minutes. Okay, perfect. All right. So now watch this. I'm on S3 right now. If I click, you'll see you see what happens, right? Whenever I click on the button, you can see that in the route, I don't know if you can see that, but what's happening is it's trying to redirect me to slash API slash auth slash login. Now, because Nginx on the server on S3 is not configured to, to like route any slash API uh, routes, on the front end, what happens is it's just going to redirect back to the index.html. Okay, so if you look over here in this location, right, what happens is it looks for all of the, it, it will look for the correct route, and if it can't find it, it'll just redirect back to index.html. So right now it thinks that's, it, 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 so right now, like you can, it, it kind of looks like the React app is treating it as like, it's some kind of like server-side route or, or, or client-side route, when in reality, it's supposed to be an actual redirect to the API. So all we got to do is one, we got to set up Nginx to listen to this endpoint. So I'll do that first and then we'll set up the API because I want to see, I want you guys to see what happens when we modify, when we make those changes. So let's go in and edit our S3, not Anson from the IO, Nginx config. And we'll set this route right underneath this location over here. So location slash API. And it could be whatever prefix uh, that your API is set on. So for example, my API on the Nest.js app is prefixed with slash API, which I like to do makes it easier to handle. Um, so essentially what we're going to be doing is, okay, so think of it like this. So let, let's just kind of like take a step back a little bit and understand what's going on. So from previous tutorials, we had set up a firewall and that firewall only allows uh, communication to droplets through the load balancer. Okay. And then you can see that right over here. If I go to network tab, I go to firewalls, you can see that we have some rules and you can see that uh, all requests uh, to these three droplets, S1, S2, S3, can only be made through. Uh, it, it can only be. It, it can only come from the load balancer. Okay, and we don't have any limit on the load balancer. Anyone can make a request through that. Now, um, the problem here, or well, not really a problem, but uh, more so, what needs to happen is when the load balancer makes the request or forwards traffic to, let's say, droplet S3, okay? Uh, the reason why we have Nginx is because we still need a web server that can communicate with the drop with the uh, load balancer, okay? So we use something like Nginx. You could use Apache or whatever you want, but we use Nginx. But Nginx is only configured currently to listen to uh, this slash route, okay? But what we're gonna do is we needed to, we needed to, we need API requests to be listened to, okay? And the way we do this when we deploy it is we proxy pass the request down to the API that is currently running on the production server, but locally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna proxy pass HTTP localhost, and this could be any port. I'm just gonna set it to 5001. So it's gonna be the same port as uh, what we have in S2. Okay, and remember they're in different servers, so it's completely fine. Okay, so what's gonna happen is every request that is now gonna be made to S3 slash API, Nginx is gonna pick that up and it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna proxy pass that down to here. We're gonna basically send all the request headers, the payloads, we're gonna send the exact route down to this local host port 5001. And it's basically gonna take whatever route that the user requested and just basically like attach it to the end. You can also do other nice things too, such as uh, rewriting the route so you can get more control, uh, but we're not gonna do that. All, we, all we're gonna do is just do this, okay? So that's all we gotta do and that is it. So now let's just restart Nginx. So system CTL, uh, restart Nginx, okay? And if I refresh, uh, I think the cookie may have expired. Okay, it didn't good. Now, if I click on login, now you're gonna see that we get a 502 bad gateway. And that's because uh, Nginx can actually pick up this slash API route. 
And also one thing is make sure that on your front end, you don't use any route that's on the front end for the back end. If you do, you'd have to take care of uh, rewriting stuff. But for sim for like simplicity, just don't use like any routes on the front end that you'd have for the back end. So for example, the back end route, I only have API, which suits my needs. Okay. Um, but you can see that this dashboard route is a front end route. Okay. And that's not picked up by Nginx because it's not configured on the server side. Okay. But if I go to slash API, that'll work. Okay. The reason why it's giving us a 502 bad gateway is because we don't have the actual application running. We need to actually have it running. Okay. So this is where we're going to set up the Nest.js application. So like I said, I'll leave links in the description to everything that you need. If you want to follow along, that is. But if you're just watching, that's also fine too. So this is the Nest.js application. We're going to clone it and we're going to make some changes to it. So let's go ahead and do git clone. So let's make all the changes that we need. So let's go into the, I'm actually just renamed this directly to, uh, just so it's easy for me to just CD into it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to CD into that Nest.js project we just cloned. And before we run the installation and before we, um, uh, build, what we're going to do is, uh, I think we installed PM2 already. Okay, good. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We need to make some modifications because I in the tutorial I did hard code some URLs and I kind of just didn't get a chance to kind of fix that. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we need to go into the source slash auth folder. We're gonna go inside the controls folder. So this is the current path. Slash source slash auth slash controllers. We're gonna go into auth and we're gonna modify the auth controller.ts file. And you can see that right over here um, on line 11. Uh, this is where we have the redirect. Okay, so we're just going to one, change this to HTTPS because we're on the production server. I mean, even if you don't change the HTTPS, it'll redirect anyways because that's what we have it set up. So it's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this localhost uh, port 8000. So let me just delete that. Okay. Whoops. And we're going to replace that with our actual production uh, URL. So Anson found the IO slash dashboard. Okay, so uh, everything else seems to be good. We don't have anything else to worry about. Um, we do also have to configure the environment variables, but in terms of code changes, I think this should be the only thing in the controller. We do have to actually go into uh, the app module.ts and we do need to make some couple of changes but not too many so we do need to change this because i had the port hard coded i'm going to change it to uh i'm going to use an environment variable for that so uh we'll change to that and i'm going to use an exclamation mark uh and we're just going to parse that uh to an integer because the port is supposed to be an integer um and i think that should be it so all we got to do now is we need to uh let's see we need to configure a dot env dot development uh file okay so i'll go ahead and do that uh so let me just go ahead and do wq so let's go ahead and create one the the your the github repository does not have one by default you have to create one yourself because i have that get ignored uh so we'll create one uh actually we have to create it inside here in the root directory and uh so for the environment variables it's going to be pretty straightforward so one will set up a port and i have some documentation on the uh, actual repository okay so we'll set up a port that'll be 5001 but it could be any port you want just make sure it's the same port that you had set up in the actual uh uh in the actual nginx config when you proxy passed it so now we'll just set up the host so we're going to go back to DigitalOcean. we're going to go to uh the database so we just create our database cluster so it's going to give us a couple of uh, details. So essentially what you want to do is you want to go over here and you want to copy the host. So we'll copy that. Okay. Uh, we're going to also need the port. So the port is uh, 25060. So be sure you use the port for the managed database and not the actual default MySQL port that you would get when you install the MySQL server. All right. So there's the host. So the port, let's do that real quick. So MySQL DB port. 
25060. Let me just double check that. Okay. So we also need to set up the username. Let's see, will it be username? And that'll be, uh, it could be anything. I'll just call this Anson. We'll set up a password. So MySQL server will actually generate a password for you. Well, the one, the managed database will generate one for you. That is, uh, that is compliant with their, uh, their, uh, their password encryption. Uh, so they were their password encryption method. Uh, so you can see over here, uh, if you click on users and databases, you can actually go over here and create the actual user. So we'll do that right now. So Anson and, uh, Want to make sure you have it set to MySQL 8 plus. Um, but uh, yeah, but if you have issues, let's say if you are using like a, a different password encryption strategy, like the, uh, you can just change it back to legacy if you really need to. Okay, but I'm going to use MySQL 8 plus. Uh, so this should create it for us. Not sure why. Uh, it's not letting me save it though. Uh, what's going on? Why won't it let me save? Okay, let's see, it's in, there we go. Okay, so let's click copy. And uh, we can go ahead and copy that password in here. And you can always reset it too if you really need to, you can always reset it. Okay, so we need the database name. So I'll just call this Discord, Discord, uh, just call this Discord bot. And we can create that right over here. Okay. Click save. And there we go. And uh, we'll also need a cookie secret. So this is just going to be for encrypting the cookie. And if you have Stripe set up, you can add your Stripe secret key here. And also don't forget to do that on the React app too. There's documentation on the repository. So make sure you do that and then run the build. Now, what we're going to definitely do 100% is set up the Discord client ID. Discord client secret. Discord redirect URI. All right, now for this stuff, uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to go into my S2 server. Uh, hold on. Because I actually already have this stuff ready. Uh, so let me CD into that. All right, so let me go ahead and go into the... I'm going here and I'll just copy and paste all this stuff because I already have it already. Okay, and you can see that it's literally just the same thing on S2. It's literally just the same thing. Now you'll notice that the database stuff is going to be slightly different. Or actually, you know what? I just realized. Uh, actually, you know what? Sorry about that. Hold on. We have to make sure we use the same database or else our data is going to be inconsistent. So let me fix that real quick. But anyways, I just wanted to create this database cluster just to show you guys how you guys can actually uh, create your own. It's very easy. Okay, so I have two right now. Let me go back to the one that I had created already. So that way there's no like, you know, discrepancies or anything like that. So let me, let me fix that real quick, okay? But before I do that, let me actually just go ahead and copy and paste all of these credentials for the Discord ID and the Discord secret. So let me copy that. Okay, and let me go ahead and copy this. Okay, so that should be good. So remember the the redirect URL. You also need to make sure you have that set up on the on the uh, developer portal. And if you guys don't know where that is, which I'm assuming that some of you guys already know, it's basically right over here. So this is the application. You want to make sure that in OAuth two you have that redirect URL the same that matches the redirect URL that you're gonna set for the application. Okay, so it's slash API slash auth slash Discord slash redirect. Okay. Uh, so it seems like everything here looks good. We just need to get the credentials. So I'll just copy and paste all of this stuff inside here. Whoops. Uh, I think they're, are they the same? Wait, are these the same? No, they're not. They're not the same hosting. Okay. They shouldn't be anyways. Okay. So uh, my SQL DB host this will be my sql do user and that's the same one as that same port uh let me change the password okay and then we'll change it from discord bot to discord premium so we'll reuse that database okay 
And with the stripe key, I'll just set it to one, two, three. But like I said, paste your actual stripe key there, the secret key on the server. Okay, so this should be it. I think this should be it. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and do yarn start just to make sure that everything works. Oh, wait, I forgot we need to run the installation. So let's just type yarn and let's let that install all of its dependencies. All right, so now that we've installed our dependencies, we can go ahead and do yarn start. This will run it in production mode. Or no, no, I'm sorry. This will run it in development mode. Okay. But we just want to make sure that it can at least run without any errors. So it should be able to make a connection to the database just fine. Uh, so let's just wait for it to connect. So it should say running on port 5001. Okay, don't worry about this running in undefined mode. That's because we don't have an environment variable set on the system. Okay, but don't worry about that. It's completely fine. Okay, so now uh, we should... we So yeah, it definitely did connect to the database because otherwise it would have thrown an error. Okay, now... If I visit this, you can see the L redirect me. Okay, so if I click authorize, it takes me back to S2 and I'm logged in. Okay, so that's S2. Now let's make sure that it works for all other routes. So I'll, I'll just clear all my cookies. So this will log me out. Or uh, what just happened? Hold on. That shouldn't have happened. Wait. Oh, uh, you know why? I think the problem here is that... uh. Uh, let's see. So it should redirect me to the front end, but for some reason, saying four four not found, which is very weird. Oh, I think I know why. I think it's because it. I think it's because it gave it brought. Okay, I know why. It's because we didn't set up S one yet. Okay, we didn't set up S one yet. All right. So you know what I'll do? Let me go ahead and set up S one, and then let me get back to you guys because I'm going to do that off camera. Okay. All right. So I just set up the front end stuff for uh, S one. Uh, so the front end stuff is all good. I also had cloned the Nest.js app and or not cloned, but like I transfer all the files. Uh, so I didn't have to like, you know, retype all that stuff again. And so S1, S2 and S3 all have the same exact application. Okay. Well, obviously with some minor changes to like the text and stuff, just so that we can tell which is which. Uh, so this is the Nest.js app. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we're in S1. And so what we want to do now is let's go ahead. And uh, let's do yarn build. So that's going to build the files. And we're going to try to run this for S1. Okay. Now we're going to run it. It's, it's going to be on port 5001. So just wait for it to finish. And we're still going to need to set up the Nginx stuff real quick. And like I said, we're going to do this step by step. So let's just do pm2 start, name API, and then this main.js. So let's just make sure that that works. Uh, what's going on here? Okay, good. So there were some previous logs, but that's okay. Okay, let me just make sure everything's good. Uh, let's see. All right, everything's good. So port 5001. So I'm still on S1, so that's good. But if I try to go to slash API, so you see over here, if I go to try to, if I try to go to the slash API, it's going to give, it should give me, uh, let's see, wait, do I have, wait, hold on. Oh, okay. I see. I think, okay. I know, I know what it is. So what, what's essentially basically what's happening is we're, we're technically authenticated, right? Uh, so it seems like we're authenticated because we are using the same database and we've already authenticated with S2. Um, however, uh, so this is the nav bar. However, on the front end, we actually didn't do anything with, uh, redirecting back to like the homepage. Uh, if like the user visited an invalid route, if I try to go to dashboard for some reason that takes me to S2, which is really weird. So we have to kind of like figure this out real quick. But if I try to go to slash API slash auth on S2 or status, so it tells me forbidden, just strange uh because we're all using the same database 100 percent using the same database every single one is connected to the database uh i think it might also be because uh let's see i i think it's like technically like we're on s1 right now so we shouldn't actually be able to access that route i'm not sure why it says s2 though let me try again let me go back to application let's clear 
Yeah, let's just make sure we're on S1. So I shouldn't be able to access that API route at all. Though I'm not sure why it doesn't just uh yeah, so we're we are technically like authenticated. Um, so you can see that for some reason it brings the S2 though, which is really weird. But in reality, we are authenticated, so it will redirect us to the dashboard. And I think yeah, so you can see that S1, we're definitely authenticated. But when we make a request to APS auth, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's fix this up real quick. So uh, when we go to slash API slash auth, right now we don't have any Nginx config for that slash API route. So let's fix that. So I think this should be better once we actually fix this. So let's go over here. We're going to do the same thing that we did. Slash location API. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. I know it's a lot of stuff on the screen, but don't worry. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. So we're going to proxy pass this to port 5001. Uh, sudo nginx t system ctl restart nginx so this should be good okay so we have s1 s2 and s3 uh now let me actually do one more thing let me just build in s3 s2 is already running fine with pm2 so i'm not concerned about that at all and i can honestly just exit that i don't need that anymore either so we're we only have one shell for each okay so let me go ahead and do pm to start API and we'll do this main.js and let me just verify the nginx stuff again. Okay, so that's all good. Port 5001. Do the same thing here. Verify all that stuff just to make sure. Uh, S1. Okay, so that's all good. S1 and Sinfong IO. Okay, it's taking it to the same exact page. And we can see this one. Okay. So now if I go ahead and try, it's gonna say forbidden resource. So if we try to go back here, so let's see what happens if we log in. So it takes me to server S2 dashboard. Okay, there we go. And it gives me the actual like so I'm actually authenticated. Now, if I get rid of that token, or not that token, that uh, that uh, Anson IO cookie that is from the load balancer, okay. If I refresh. It's gonna say forbidden resource because right now, it's bringing us to a different API. If I keep on refreshing, so we didn't authenticate in other in other endpoints or other servers. So let's, so we're in, we're still in S two, or now we're in S three. So let's go ahead and try to access dashboard. So I don't know why it redirects me to, I don't know why whenever I do that, it redirects me to S2. Like for, I think it's because of like the cache or something. I'm not sure. But if I do, if I try to go to slash dashboard, it'll redirect me to S2. But if I refresh, it'll redirect me to S3. So I think it might be because of something with like the Nginx cache, I think. Uh, anyways, let's log in with S3. Let's just make sure S3 works. So S3 works, but I don't know why it's still saying S2. So yeah, it seems like whenever we authenticate, uh, you know what? Let me see something real quick. It might be, be it might be something with our API. Let me just make sure we did do the same thing for everything, so it shouldn't be, you know, that much of an issue. So you can see it's redirecting to the same exact place. Okay. Ideally, though, it doesn't necessarily really matter. Uh, but the problem here is now we're on S3, okay? But we can't even access the dashboard, so it does matter. I don't know why it likes to send me to S2 all the time, which is really annoying. Okay, let's authenticate. And it redirects me to S3. So it's definitely an issue with the cache, I 100% believe. It only really allows me to authenticate with S2, so it seems like we have some kind of... Uh, issue. I'm not really sure what the problem is because it seems like this is really weird behavior. Okay, I'm going to go and assume that it's likely because our cookie secret is different uh, on the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that real quick and rebuild. I think this might be what's causing it. 
Uh, everything else looks fine. The database all looks fine. So that's not a problem. I'm not concerned about that. I think it's the cookie. The actual like uh, cookie for the server. So let's go ahead and try it again. All right. So uh, I just rebuilt the app um, with the cookies. So uh, everything should be running right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go into uh, load balancer. Let's go into settings and let's just enable stick sessions. And we'll set the TL to 300. Okay. So I'm on S1 right now. Okay, let's just clear the cookies. S3, good. S1. S2. Okay, so let's log in with S3. And hopefully this works. So we log in and it redirects us to S3, but it still does not want to. Like, what the hell is this? So it says we're authenticated, but S3... Let's see, did I, let me see what the hell's going on here. We have the cookies, so why would it? Why would it not work? I don't understand. Let me see. Oh, it's a cores issue. Uh, I think it's because we have a cores issue, which is why it's not able to give us back the status. So I guess we gotta do one more thing and enable cores. Or configure this. Okay, so let's see. I'll just do this. Seems like the authentication is working. I did re-enable the sticky session. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-enable course. So I re enable it for S1 and I'm just going to run the build. So yarn build and PM to restart API. So let's just do that. Let me go ahead and do the same thing for all the other projects. So, okay. So Discord or Nest.js. Uh, we're going to go into the source folder, vim main, we'll, we'll basically go over here and just get rid of this port 3000 and we'll change it to uh, ansonphone.io. So this is S1, okay. And we just modified it for S3. So yarn build. NPM to restart. And we'll do the same thing here. So let's just main.ts. Yeah, we were, so it wasn't able to actually get us back to the dashboard because it was a cores issue, which is really strange because it should work, but uh, I don't know. Let's, we'll find out from this. Uh, okay, so the build succeeded, but we didn't specify the name. So let's do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to S3. So still not able to get to S3 for some reason. It just doesn't make any sense. S3. So you can see over here, it's saying block. But why would it say block, though? It's coming from the same domain. Request URL. Let me look at the React project again. Did I mess something up? Maybe I did. Oh, no wonder. Yeah, it's a problem. Okay, let's fix that. It's HTTPS. Okay. Whoops. Right, let's fix that and then let's just 
move the files back and then we will figure out what's next all right so um so we're still on s3 and like i said the cookies are the cookie session the stick session is enabled 300 seconds Good APIs running. Uh, let's just change. Let's move this build folder to the correct folder. Uh, RM3. All right. So if I refresh, I'm at S1. Seems like our cookie expired. That's okay. All right. Let's just see if it works for S1. So this should authenticate us to the correct server. Okay, good. So S1 works. Perfect. Okay, let's try it again. So if we go to application, if we clear the cookies, and if, this should take us to a different server, so S2. So let's go ahead and authenticate in S2. So this takes us back to S2. Perfect. Exactly what we want it. So it's always going to be S2 no matter what. And if I go to slash API says auth slash status, it'll give me back my authentication status. Okay, now, uh, one thing to note is that even if you clear, so let's say, for example, if you did log in, the session does exist on the server, but if, but if you don't have that cookie, like if you don't have that, that, uh, that Anson IO cookie, that sticky session, even if you try to access the API slash auth slash status route, it's not always guaranteed. Well, actually, it seems like it does give it back to you, which is really strange. I think it's because we also have a cookie over here, I think, which is why. So if I remove that, you can see that, uh, oh, seems like it actually is going to stay there. Okay, that's quite interesting. So I didn't know that. But um, if I go back here, this brings me back to S1. S2, someone S2 right now. Let's see if I can go back to S2. Okay, so it seems like I have logged into S2. I deleted that cookie, but when it brought me back to S2, I was still logged in. So it seems like that doesn't, so it doesn't actually destroy the session, which is obviously, because it doesn't do anything with the session. Um, okay, I guess I guess that makes sense. It's a little bit weird, but I'm still trying to understand it, but it's okay. So let's clear this, let's refresh. So we're in S3. Let's authenticate in S3 now. So we are in S3, perfect. So it seems like the issue was that cookie that we had uh the, the cookie secret that i had on each server was in well the one that i had on the i think it was one of the servers i think it was s3 that cookie was incorrect so i think it wasn't able to properly validate the cookie so i think that's why that behavior you guys saw was happening okay um but yeah i think overall this works as expected now what happens if we now what happens if we destroy not destroy but delete the cookie that uh that that session from the server you can see that it's forbidden now if i try to access dashboard it's going to not let me because i'm not authenticated so no matter what it's always going to fetch that database from DigitOcean, and it's going to do that serialization and deserialization and check to see if we are authenticated okay and since we're not it's we're and, it, and like i said we're still stuck on s3 because we have that cookie set Okay, and if I log in, this should bring back to S3 as expected. Okay, and if I log out, uh, if I log out, uh, I will pretty much do the same thing. So if I now, yeah, and even if I delete the cookies on the server, the same thing would happen. So if I were to like drop like the sessions or delete the sessions, it would pretty much do the same thing. It would redirect me out. Okay, so that's pretty much S3. Let's go ahead and uh, remove that ants and IO cookie. S1, if I authenticate in S1. So we basically now have three servers. Okay, why did this just bring it to S3? That's really annoying. Okay, I think it's a cache issue. I think it's the browser. So you see how it redirected me to S3, but then when I refresh, they brought me back to S1. S1. I mean, it's okay because at least it brought us back to S1, which is the correct actual application, like the actual server. But that's. But I think it's because of like a browser issue. Um, so for example, if I remove that, you can see that I'm still authenticated. Okay, even though I deleted that sticky session, I'm still authenticated, which is good because if we're still logged in, but we just have to forward the traffic to a different server, 
then we should stay logged in. We shouldn't be logged out just because we're forwarding traffic. We should, we're still technically logged in because the actual database has our session. That's our session store. So watch this. If I uh, delete this and if I delete that, let's re-log in again. So right now we're in S2. So if I log in with S3, it's probably going to redirect me to S2. Okay, it doesn't. So before, it, I don't know why it, it did that. It's just so weird. Like the, the behavior is just really awkward, you know, but it's nothing too crazy. Like right now, it's redirecting to S1, which is good. If I refresh again, I'm in S2. Okay. If I log in, it brings me to S2. So it seems like this seems to work. Whenever I, if I clear all the cookies out at the same time, it'll redirect me to a proper server. But if I delete, let's say if I delete, uh, if I delete connect session ID. Okay, so I delete the connect session ID. So we're technically in S3. Okay, and if I, let me do one more thing. I'm gonna delete that cookie. Refresh, so we're in S2 now. Okay, now watch what happens if I uh, clear all the cookies now. We're in S3, I think it's gonna redirect me to S2, I think. Okay, no, redirect, okay. All right, I don't know, it's a little bit weird. Um, on why that redirected me. I think it's because of a cache issue. I'm not sure. But overall, this is essentially what it is that we accomplished. So now we have three separate applications. Well, not three separate applications. We have three of the same applications, but they live on their own server. And uh, it can pretty much be distributed. The load is taken away from just one server and it's split up into three different servers. So instead of having one server take every single request uh, for all the customers, what happens is the load balancer will try its best to balance out the traffic and it'll use whatever algorithm you want it to use. So we use round robin. We can also use least connections. Um, and yeah, that, that's really it. I know it was a really long video, but I hope it was worth it. And I hope you guys learned something. This was definitely a lot of fun. I've never done something like this before. And it was definitely nice to learn something like that. Um, and I really like how this whole infrastructure just seemed to have worked out. Uh, we got our application deployed on three instances. We have it on S1, S2, and S3. And if we wanted to bring it to S4, we would literally have to do everything all over again. Or everything as in like, you know, create a droplet and then, um, you know, set up our environment, get all the files, and then we're good. But that is pretty much it for this video. I think we covered a lot of stuff with this load balancing series, and I hope you guys learned a lot. So I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.